I'm uh, Katrina Hastings, I'm living here in Kalini now. My own job was I was a lecturer in Irish Studies and Heritage Studies. My husband was ordained to the Church of Ireland 25 years ago this year and when he was ordained first we moved to the West and we've been going around the West ever since. Well, I knew myself something was wrong. I was limping and pulling my left foot and then my foot became very weak and it was tripping me up. The GP said, oh, you just have a drop foot and you'll just have to sort it out and get on with your business. And I said, would we not be better to find out what's causing the drop foot? So eventually I got her to refer me to a neurologist and when he told me that I had motor neuron disease, and literally a bomb went off in my head. And in my head, this tape was playing with saying, you've got motor neuron disease, you've got motor... And you have to tell poor Gary and the children. So when I got home, I went into the house and then he came in and looked at my face and he said, what's going on here? And I said, I'm afraid I hadn't got too good news. So I told him anyway. We didn't tell the children for a few days until we got our head around it. And then poor Kashim was in London and we had to tell her and she's done neuroscience and stuff like that and she knows exactly what this is. Poor Calm is up in Kinvara and he almost had a heart attack I think. But you know what, or after about three weeks or so we all got our head around it and I know at one level inside me I was relieved because I actually thought I was losing my mind. The Motor Neuron Association have a nurse who comes to give you a hand and then one day I was saying to her I was thinking it would be good for me to get out of the house one day a week as a respite for me and a respite also for my husband who's my main carer so that for one day in the week he wouldn't have to be responsible for Katrina. So she said, oh, do you know the hospice in Blackrock, they do a day hospice. And I'd never heard tell of day hospice, but she explained it a little bit and it sounded like a great idea. So she contacted them and they explained how we would apply. And then I went for assessment and then they said they would give me a place for 12 weeks. So you go, I go every Wednesday for 12 consecutive weeks. And that's been just brilliant. Uh, my name is Dermot Batigan and I'm a volunteer driver at the Black Rock Hospice. I've been, I've been working at the Black Rock Hospice for almost six years now. Well, I was recently retired and I had some free time on my hands and uh, this seemed a worthwhile project to get involved in and I'm happy to do, help out any way I can. I was feeling a little bit anxious and I was saying things to Gary like and how will I manage at lunchtime and how will I manage to get to the bathroom and, and he was saying things like but sure it's a hospice they look after you for they know that you can't manage but I was still feeling a wee bit anxious. Tuesday is my normal day for volunteering but on occasion I might help out on a Wednesday or Thursday if I'm free. I would pick them up at their home around 10.30 in the morning and uh, it can be a little bit different for people I meet for the very first time. They can be apprehensive when they're coming to the hospice. The hospice has a connotation attached to it and people are a bit nervous about it. He was reassuring me. He knew all about it and how it works and he'd been looking after lots of people and he knew that I might be anxious and he was explaining to me a little bit how the day would work. Well, I generally describe the people they're going to meet rather than the institution itself. Uh, because the institution, I think the name maybe has a fear factor attached to it for some people. But if I explain to them they're going to meet Andrea at the reception and Martian, the security guy, it puts them at their ease somewhat. Palliative care can change the quality of your life with a life-limiting illness because when you go for palliative care, it is tailored to your needs at any particular time. And the word palliative, I found out, comes from the Latin word for a cloak. And so palliative means this cloak is wrapped around you to embrace you as you are, not to make you better, not to worry about you, just to say, here's Katrina or here's whoever, and this is how you are today, and can we give you a hand here? Oh, that's amazing.